Welcome Stella, welcome Usas, welcome Dorothy, Ola Martin, Oriyomi, gift blessing. Welcome Usas. Oh, happy Mother's Day to you too. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies in the house. Hello, Zubi. Uh, good to have you all today. Sorry, I've not been I've not been around for the past one week. Um, I've been a little under the weather, and um, it's not the enemy, by the way. I have not been feeling too well, but I'm happy to be back now. The enemy has no hold on me, right? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know, um, someone was telling me some week ago that oh, Tega, I'm enjoying your messages. Um, your messages are very inspiring. They are really helping me. This, that, that, that. Um, Tega, be very careful. Be very careful. You need to be praying hard. <clears throat> you need to be praying hard. And this is your message. Um, it's not. It might not be very. Some people might not like it, or somebody might not like it, or this. Be praying hard. And I just looked, and I just laughed. Okay, thank you very much. I don't um, do three hours vigil. Of binding the devil before I come and talk here. No, I don't do. Thanks for sharing, Stella. I don't do um, to us binding the devil and binding every person that uh, <laughs> that is against what I'm saying before I come and share here. No, I just do my normal fellowship, do my normal prayers like I normally do, and I come out and talk because um, I talk from a superior knowledge. I talk from a superior understanding. I talk from knowing that I'm hidden in Christ. I talk from knowing that my righteousness is in Christ Jesus. It's not, I talk from knowing that, that if you are going to touch me, you must first of all touch Christ. You must touch God. And who can fight? Who can wrestle against my God? You know? So when the, when the person just told me, eh, you need to do serious prayer before you can be talking like this, I just laugh. If I'm going to spend hours praying, it's just to fellowship with my God and to understand more of what he wants for me. Not because I want to bind the devil that he has already triumphed over. That my Jesus has made a public show of him already. So why should I, you know? Um, this week, I've just been listening to some of my, some of the misconceptions and the, <laughs> that Pastor Sunday Adelaide, my mentor was talking about and the things that are happening in the church, you know, and I just felt sometimes I would listen and I would just laugh. Sometimes I would listen and I would speak in tongues. Sometimes I would listen and I would just shake my head. You know, there's so much darkness. There's so much ignorance in the African church. There's so much bondage. There's so much fear. There's so much dependencies in the African church. People are so much in ignorance of their power, of the freedom they have in Christ Jesus. They are so much in ignorance of their position in Christ. It's so sad, you know. It's so sad when you see Christians begging, begging God every day, every day for things that they are, they've, they've told them that they should take charge of. Every day they come, they beg him, they beg him, they beg him. And they do our God as if our God is deaf, our God is blind, our God is dumb. Our God is not deaf. Our God is love. Our God is not deaf, our God is not blind, our God is not dumb. Let's not be coming to beg him every day for things that he has already given to us, you know. Let's learn more about how to get those things, how to get the ideas, how to expand our ideas, how to go about it. What is this situation about me now? How do I solve it? He has given them to us. He has given us a wisdom. He has made us hum homo sapiens, a thinking being. Let's not, because we, we are Christians, now every day we run to him just because we want something, we want that, we want that. The world people, they don't run to God and they are making it. How? How are they making it? Our superior knowledge we have in Christ and in God is that we are going to we are, we are saved and we are going to heaven. But everything we need pertaining to life and godliness, God in his infinite mercy and wisdom, he has given to the earth. He has given to us children. He has given to the wicked, the good, the bad, the ugly, those that love him, those that don't love him. He has given us everything we need to succeed on earth. So why how come that the Christians run to him every day, not for fellowship, but to ask, 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 ask. 
not asking about how they can subdue their country, <laughs> but to ask about what, what they need. They are acts of this, acts of that, acts of that. We beg him, we beg him, we sweat. We pray so many prayers in the churches. And so, in fact, some for the pastor to tell you, I'm not praying at all. You are not praying. I'm not seeing you shaking. I'm not seeing you, I'm not seeing you taking the territory. I'm not seeing you shaking, shaking. You are not praying enough. How do they know that you are not praying enough? Are we, rest, are we wrestling against flesh? Are we fighting? Are we fighting? How do they know you are not praying enough? Do they see your heart? Why do they think that if we don't, if we don't fight and we don't shake our body and we don't sweat and I don't scream my voice to the, to, to the, to the maximum, then I'm not praying? A misconception. A misconception. A misconception. So people will say, ah, the, even the white people's church, they don't pray. I don't like those kind of church. They don't pray. No, they don't pray. No, they don't fight the devil. They don't fight the devil. Why do you need to fight the devil? He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We do not need to fight physically with the devil. We can't. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations, imaginations in our head. Every defeat we, are, we, 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 we experience in life is from our mind. It's from our mind. Every defeated position we come from is from our mind. It's not because the devil has defeated us. It's because our mind has, be, has been open to think that the devil has won. He said we should fight all those imaginations and everything else that exalts itself against the knowledge of our Lord. And bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Who do we war? Who do we war against? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they are mighty. Using our mind, using our mind, fighting against our mind and our imaginations. That is our. That is our fight against everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of our God. Fight, fight it in your mind. Fight, know it in your mind that I have defeated, that that demon cannot touch me. Know it in your mind that I am hidden in Christ. Know it in your mind that this is the right, this is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith in the mind. Know it in your in the mind that Jesus has made a public show of devil. That he has made a public show of if our wishes and witchcraft are just a little, little, little demons in the hand of devil. God, Jesus himself has made a public show of devil himself. Triumphing over him. And we are busy fighting witches. We are we're doing night vigil for witches that are troubling us, for wizards that are troubling us. Night vigil for those people that are, that, that are, that, that are, are, are truncating our, our destiny. Who has your destiny? If not the creator of your destiny, who can truncate your destiny? You that you've called yourself a believer in God. Misconceptions, signs that shows that your leader is in the Moses generation. I'm going to go straight to that. Because if I begin to talk about the misconceptions, so many misconceptions, I will just keep going in the, in the body of the African churches. You know, I'm so particular about my African churches. Thanks, Samudukpe, for sharing. I'm so particular about my African churches because that's, my, that's where I come from. My heart bleeds. My heart bleeds every time. My heart bleeds every time I see people just running helter skelter in the church. My heart bleeds. My heart bleeds when I see people so afraid, so afraid, so afraid, looking for one prayer house onto another prayer house, one powerful man of God after another powerful man of God. My heart bleeds because Christ died for us all. Christ said it is finished. He said, this is the victory that will overcome the world, even our faith. When can we, how do we build that our faith? To know that we are victorious. To know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How do we build that faith? Why is the church not helping us to build that faith? To build the faith of even a child. To know that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. To know that they are hidden in Christ. To know that he has, Jesus has made a public show of the enemy. To know that we are, we are only told to go and make disciples of nations. To build us up and to go. How do we build our faith? How have we become so, in, so, so dependent on the church, on the church, so dependent that we are even afraid to take a step without informing a man of God? We are even afraid to do a project without informing a man of God? We are even afraid, afraid to, to go for, for um, um, a ceremony without informing somebody to pray over me, pray for me, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I'll be, I'll be fighting for somebody to pray for me. 
after I've been five, after I've been in the church for five years, I'm still fighting for somebody to pray for me. When am I going to start praying for people? Hello, my family. Hello, Violet. Hello, Stamudukbe, Heidi. When are we going to start praying for people? Don't go and be meeting. We have to grow. We have to grow. We have to grow from the, 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 the baby Christians. We have to become matured. Sons and daughters. Okay, signs to show that my leader is in the Moses generation. You know, the Moses generation. We just tagging in the Moses generation and the um, Joshua generation. That was my mentor was just tagging. It's just, just, you know, just um, to let you understand what's the situation right now. The Moses generation. We talk about the Moses generation. We're talking about um, um, you know Moses. Moses um, led the Israelites out of Egypt. He led, he led them through the wilderness. He led them for forty years through the wilderness, and um, but Joshua, Joshua led the the, the the Israelites into the promised land. And when Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land, he, he directed them, he gave them understanding of how to take their, uh, their territories, of how to take their, their, how to take their territories for, for themselves, you know, how to go into the land, to subdue the land, to bring their, in the influence of their God into the land, to dominate the land, to change the character of the land, to change the culture of the place, to reflect the God, their own God, you know. They went, Joshua took them into the promised land and Joshua told them how to inhabit the promised land, how to subdue the promised land, how to dominate in the promised land. Moses did not take them into the promised land. Moses took them out of Egypt. It's like, it's like taking us, it's like um, us receiving salvation. When we are born again, we receive the, the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are saved. But what do we do when we are saved? You know, Moses will keep you saved. Moses will continue to keep you safe. The Moses leaders will continue to keep you safe. Thanks, Stella. The Moses leaders will continue to keep you safe. They will continue to tell you to guard your salvation, guard your salvation, guard your salvation. Don't go anywhere. Just stay in the church. Just stay in the church. Just continue to build this church. Your ministry is in the church. Your ministry is, is, is with us. Just build the church. Build the church of God. Build this, house, build this house. Let us grow. Let us grow. Evangelize. Bring them back in. Let them stay here. Stay here. That's the Moses. The Moses leaders. And the, and the Joshua leaders are the leaders that train you up. They train you up and they release you. They train you up and they release you. Knowing that your calling is to the world. Your calling is not to the church. The churches have the five foot ministry which is fine for the equipping of the saints for ministry. Ministry. Is to the world ministry is to people that are not saved ministry is to people that you want to bring to christ ministry is to subdue the nations to the with the principles of god ministry is to go into your environment and let them know christ let them know the principles of christ let them know the principles of god let them understand that this the, the only principle that they can live by that will work for them is the principles of god that's what ministry is and how to bring that how to bring it to them how to better reflect jesus in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's the Joshua leaders, the Moses leaders. The Moses leaders will keep you in church. Signs that you are in the, uh, your leader is a Moses leader. They conduct, one, they conduct deliverance service for members, wanting you to fight the devil every day, every week, every month. Deliverance service, deliverance service. They are, they are conducting deliverance services for you that, are, that is already saved. The Moses leaders, they conduct deliverance service. They wrestle physically. You see them sweating. When God says that if, if you, you, you cast out the devils from the unbelievers and you, you just cast it out, you send it out. You don't fight, you don't wrestle, you don't... They, they just think that we oh, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principles and darkness. So they are still wrestling. It's not them that are doing the work. It's Jesus. You cast out the devil in the name of Jesus from the unbelievers. He that is saved in saved is, is saved indeed. Why, can, why do we have to be conducting deliverance service for our members in church all the time? What for? They are saved. Tell them to grow in that understanding. Grow in that knowledge. Because it's what you are afraid of that keeps coming to you. If you know that you are saved and that you are bigger than that witches. You are bigger than that demons. Let that is what the church should be building in us. You know, our faith. So that we can be victorious. The fight, the fight, the good fight. The good fight is the fight of faith. The good fight is not the fight of, of 
of no, of of coming every time, every time to be delivered, every time, every time to 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 kill the devil that is disturbing your life. No devil is disturbing your life when you're saved. You begin. We need to renew our mind to increase our knowledge of of who we are in Christ Jesus, and that's the duty of the church. So, but the Moses leaders, they are conducting deliverance service for us all the time. When you are not pregnant, they'll conduct deliverance service for you. When you are, you, you've, you've been single for a long time, you've not married, they'll say it's, your, it's the people in your village that are disturbing you, they will conduct deliverance service for you. When you, when you have not been able to have a baby, they'll say, ah, some people have tied your womb. As a Christian, they are conducting deliverance service for you. So they keep conducting deliverance service. For every challenge you have, they'll say it's the devil, they'll conduct deliverance service, deliverance service, deliverance service. That's the Moses generation. When you have a challenge, look at it. Commit it into the Lord's hands and walk. Continue with your life. We are all here for a purpose. We are all here for a purpose. It's not, it's not, it, it, it's not whether we have 10, 15 children that make us fulfill purpose. We are here for something greater than that. If we can't have a baby, great babies are everywhere. Adopt one. Don't let any man of God be fooling you every time, casting and binding from your life, telling you to do 30 days fasting, 50 days fasting, as if you are going to be twisting the hand of God. Just because you, you don't have a baby or because you've not gotten married, continue to do fasting. Be praying, oh, come back, oh, I need to anoint you this week. I need to anoint you next week. This week as you go out, favor is yours. You will meet the right man. Is life all about that? People are fulfilling purpose. A lot of people are fulfilling purpose in life. And they are, they, they are not even married. Why do we need this all married, married, married? Because of that. Instead of us to be enjoying and living our life and working for God. We are all busy doing deliverance service. Dying, dying, crying every day. And our churches are, 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 are enjoying this. They are growing on it. Conducting deliverance service every day for you. Every time you don't come for a vigil, they will tell you, you didn't come for this vigil, or you didn't come for this vigil. And you know you have that problem. You know you have that problem. You know you have that problem. Do they think our God is deaf and dumb? No. Before you think of that thing, He knows it. He knows it. Move on with life. Move on with life. Oprah Winfrey did not get married, but they will remember her name more than they will remember my mother's name. In fact, how many people will remember my mother's name that gave birth to eight children? When she passes away in the next 50 years, if not the family. Or how many people will, if I don't fulfill purpose in my life, how many people will remember me in the next 20, 50 years? If, if I don't fulfill purpose, if I don't do what God has sent me to do. Whether I have 10 children, it doesn't matter. People will not remember me. Whether, my, whether my, my, uh, you have 20 children and you don't fulfill purpose, if you die, you, that's it. In the next 15, 20 years, only your family that will remember you. Hmm? Sister Teresa, was it not Sister Teresa? Mother Teresa, look at all she did. Mary Slesso, they, they didn't have any, any husband, they didn't have any children. But their name is remembered to tomorrow because they, they, they pursued their passion, they pursued their purpose. It's not about children, 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 me, 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 myself, myself, myself. Mm. So oh, that the, the Moses generation, that's what they do. They conduct nine visuals to prevent the devil from attacking you, you know. They conduct breakthrough services. They conduct the vigil for 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 you to get good health. They conduct vigil for you to for you to get promotion. They conduct vigil for so many things that that are so mundane, things that you just need to work at. If you don't have promotion, why are you not having promotion? Do you need to go and further your studies? Do you need to go and learn something more? Do you need to go and educate, self develop yourself more, so that you can be equipped for that position? It's not deliverance service that causes promotion. Promotion is from hard work, diligence. It's not deliverance service that will give you promotion now. So don't, don't be going to 9VG because you are looking for things that God has already given us principles on how to get. The Moses leaders. The Moses leaders give you lots of programs in churches just to keep you in the church, just to keep you, um, to keep you bind in the church. They give you divine acceleration programs, breakthrough services, divine encounter, world conversion service, how you're going to convert the wealth of the hidden to, to become your wealth, how you're going to steal from the, from the wealth of the hidden. They are not teaching you how you're going to make wealth. They're just, they're just think, thinking that God is just going to pour it on you. Divine, 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 divine. Everything wants to get it by no hard, no work at all. We want to get good health. We are not taking care of ourselves physically. We are not eating right. We are not exercising. We want to get good health just by prayer. Divine, divine, divine. 
We want to we want, we want to get promotion. We are not studying. We are not doing the things that are needed for promotion. We just pray. Divine, divine, divine. So they'll keep holding you with different programs so that you keep coming. Meanwhile, the programs are all in futility. You know? So Moses' generation, some of them, they, they see things a lot in the spirit about you. And they continually keep you in bondage. I'm saying this about you. You need to come. Let's discuss it. I'm going to put you on a five days fast. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The Moses, some of the Moses leaders, they see so much, so much things about you that you don't see for yourself. It's high time you tell them that no. I need if if it's if it's what is really happening, God will show it to me. We need to grow up. We need to stop being babies. The Moses leaders, they talk a lot about the works of the devil. I'm just generalizing right now. Some leaders they talk so much about the works of the devil. They don't tell you how powerful God is. Oh, the devil just did that thing and that person just fell down and, and collapsed. And we prayed, prayed, prayed and revived it. The devil just did this thing and that Christian that was, uh, that was about, to, about to get that job just lost the job. The devil just did this, the devil just did that, the devil just did that. So the devil is now more powerful than, than God. The devil, the devil. You know? The Moses leaders, they are the leaders that will not, will not, will not let you, will not let you break out. They are the leaders that think that every, everything you say that is contrary to what they think is a division. That you are breaking up the body of Christ. You are breaking up the church. Anything you say that is not in line with what they are thinking is a division. That is the Moses leaders. The Moses leaders, they are the leaders that, that will not release you. That will tell you, you stay in this department. This is where I want you to stay. This is how long I want you to stay there. This is how, this is when I, I don't, I'm not going to release you yet from that department. The Moses leaders, they control your mind. They control your thoughts. They want to know everything about you. They want to know where you are traveling. They want to know where you are coming back. They want to know, they want to know, in fact, they want to know the money, the, your bank account, in fact. They want to know everything about you. They want to know what is happening in your marriage. They want to know, 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 know everything about you. The Moses leaders, they don't let you to be free. They don't let you to be to, to blossom in the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. They don't want you to, to know that the power that they have, that you can have it as well. That the closeness they have to Jesus, that you can have it yourself. They want you to come to them all the time. With all your challenges, come to them. With all your challenges, come to them. They don't teach you to rise up and stand on your own. And, and solve your problems. And dominate. And take charge of your promised land. They don't teach you that. The Moses generation. The leaders that are the Moses generation. They attribute all challenges to the works of Satan. Thereby putting you more in bondage. When you are sick, oh, they'll say, oh, maybe it's, uh, what did you do? Have you confessed all your sins? So if you have not confessed all your sins, if you, are, if you are sick and you are a Christian, that means you've sinned against God. That's the assumption they gave in church. That's why some people are sick and they hide it. Instead of them to have people... If, if somebody, if you, if you're getting what I'm saying, can you just say, can you just put some stars if you're hearing me? Because I'm not saying any comment. Am I talking too much? Give me some, some stars, some, that's so correct. Okay, so gift, you're hearing me. That's good. That's good. So the, the, the most, the most, the, the leaders are in the Moses generation. Some of them will attribute all challenges to the works of Satan. Like I'm, I'm, I've not been feeling very fine. So some people, they might just think that maybe, maybe I've been, I've, I've been sinning. Maybe um, I've allowed the devil to come into my life. Maybe uh, the devil is attacking me. Maybe this, maybe that. They always have, they always put the devil, they give the devil so much power. If you're sick, for Christ's sake, you're sick, you'll get better. You know? If you, what, what did you not do? They'll tell you, what did you not do? What did you do? Search your life. Look at your life. Because this sickness cannot just be coming like that. Search your life. Nothing. You didn't do anything. You're just sick. The Moses leaders see devil in everything that happens to you. They see devil in the trials and any trial and any tribulation, any challenge you're passing through. They see devil, 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 devil. It's not the devil. Even in the Bible even tell us that we'll pass through challenges. We'll pass through trials. This world is full of tribulations. He said, but be of good shades. I've overcome the world. He said he will walk with us all through the way. Though we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, he will walk with us. He did not say that we will not see challenges because we've given our lives to God. The Bible did not say that. So let no leader tell you that all is going to be rosy all your life. None of the, none of the apostles had a very rosy life. Why do you think that any, because you've given your life to God now that you, can, you will not pass through any challenges? You will pass through. So let no, no leader of a church begin to use that to hold you grip, to put you in fear because of ignorance. 
We always perish. The Bible says we perish for lack of knowledge. It's not we per we don't perish because the devil is stronger than Christians. We perish because of what we don't know. What we don't know. Hello, Callistos. We perish because of what we don't know. Not because the devil is stronger than us. Because the devil has been defeated. Jesus said it is finished. And he gave and, and, and he gave his life for us. He said it is finished. He has triumphed over the devil. He has made a public show of him. Don't let any any, any don't let us remain in the same consciousness, right? He has made a public show of the devil. If you're sick, you recover. It's not the devil. So many people cannot tell you in church that they are not feeling fine, that they are sick. They'll say, Oh my enemy, oh this that, that. oh this that, that. oh this that, that. Ah Hello Oscar, how are you? It's not the devil pursuing you. You are a victor, not a victim. Some churches make us to remain to remain victims. African churches especially. They make you remain victims. You don't they don't they don't they don't empower you to know that you are victorious. In every circumstances you are victorious. You know, like the like I was saying that the person told me that I should be careful, I should be praying hard because I don't know some people would not like what I'm saying. Who cares? Who cares? I come from a superior position, a position of my of, of knowing my words, of knowing where I am, of knowing who I am in Christ Jesus, of knowing that I'm hidden in Christ Jesus, of knowing that you cannot touch me because I, I'm the apple of God's eyes. That's a superior knowledge. So who is that? Who is that small demon? Who is that person that put a little small charm in his pocket that wants to come and touch me? It, it has no it, it, no effect, no effect, just knowledge. Not because I, I spent 10 hours binding the devil. Just knowledge. Just the position I've placed myself. Christ, the Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places. Far above all principalities. Far above all rulers of darkness of this world. Far above spiritual wickedness in high places. We are seated in the heavenly places. Every child of God is seated in the heavenly places. But if you don't realize that, you are afraid, afraid. That, that thing that you are afraid of will come to you. That thing that you are afraid of will come and harm you. If you are afraid of the devil every day, you are afraid of that wish, it will come and meet you. Because you've not put yourself in the position that Jesus has put you in the heavenly places. A superior position. A position of envy. A position of, of, un, of untouchable. And that is where I am. Who can touch the Lord's anointed? Who can touch the Lord's anointed? No one. Who can fight against me? Can you fight against God? Hmm. You know. The Moses generations. The Bible says, having spoiled principalities and power, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Jesus triumphed over principalities and power. And he gave me the authority. He said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. How do, why, why is it so hard for, for us Christians to take that? That all powers in heaven and on earth have been given to us. All powers in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go and make disciples of nations. That's what he only, that's the only thing he sent me to do. To go and bring, set the captives free. So I just realized that even in the church, so many people are in captivity. Set the captives free. I thought it was only in the world. Right now in the church, we are so many in bondage. In bondage to doctrines. In bondage to fear. In bondage to civility, we are just doing things out of ignorance. My people perish for lack of knowledge. My people do not perish because devil has defeated them. My people do not perish because the witchcraft, the power of the witchcraft is very big. My people do not perish because that people pursuing them in the village is stronger than their God. They only perish for lack of knowledge. If the witchcraft is going, if witches are going to kill you, it's lack of your knowledge. If, if any person holding anything come to meet you to harm you and it harms you, it's lack of knowledge because you're afraid. It's because you don't know who you are. It's because you don't know the finished work that Jesus did on the cross. It's because you don't know that you have been, you have been covered. You are covered in his blood. You don't even need to plead the blood every day on your life. You are covered. You are covered in his blood. You don't need to plead the blood every time you enter the car of the car before you drive. You are covered in his blood. It's the assurance you have in you. The confidence I have in me. That I walk in his presence. I'm covered in his presence. He walks beside me. He, he sits with me. He dines with me. I fellowship with him. I enjoy his presence. That's the confidence I have. Hello. 
that's the confidence I have. Fighting the devil every day instead of fellowshipping with God and quoting the wages of the, <laughs> the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't, we are, we are, we've turned, church has turned our prayer life to something else. We don't know how to pray anymore. We are fighting every day, fighting every day, sweating instead of fellowshipping, instead of looking and gazing into the Lord's eyes, instead of asking him, what do you want me to do? Here am I, Lord, use me. As the Lord wants somebody, here am I, use me. Father Lord, which of the attributes in my life I need to change? How do I become more like you? That is our prayer. How do I become more like you? How do I take those territories for you? How do I dominate on this earth? How do I dominate? How do I dominate? How do I reign? How do I showcase you? That should be our prayer points. More like you, Lord. Teach me to be more like you. As I study about you, as I reflect on you, as I gaze into your face, as I fellowship with you, let me be more like you. That is my prayer point. Let me be more like you, Lord. Let me be more like you. I don't, the only time I will fight the devil is when I'm casting him, casting him out of somebody. I will cast him. I will fight him. I will cast him out of somebody. I'm not going to be casting the devil in my life. My life, the devil has no place. He cannot stay here. This is a superior body. It's, an, it's a body that has risen with Christ. I'm a new creation. It is finished. It is finished for the devil and my life. I only cast him out of people that are possessed, unbelievers. How do you know that your leader is in the Moses generation? They're always after you. They always, they always want to know everything about your life. Why you are not in church? Why you are not in nine fishing? You 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 are you are not doing this. You are not doing that. When the, when the devil will come and attack you, now you will run to us. That's what they'll be telling you. You are not here now. You, you didn't come for this program. When the devil comes to meet you now, you'll be running to us. <laughs> Why do we have to be in other programs? We can be somewhere serving the Lord. We can be somewhere doing the Lord's work. We don't have to be in other programs. They always want you to come to them for counsel. They always want you to come to them. They are the problem solvers. They're always happy to receive you to solve problems, to, 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 to hear your story. So you're telling you just keep pouring into them. They are the drums. They will just keep listening and tell you telling you solutions from their own mind most of the time. Why don't they teach you to, to, to be problem solver yourself? Why do they encourage you every time for every mundane thing, every little quarrel in the church, every little argument? The pastor, the pastor, every little, uh, the pastor be welcoming you all, be welcoming you all. He's draining himself. He is draining himself. That's why so many pastors burn out. Because they have not trained the members to stand on their own. They carry all the work of the, of, the, of the members, all the things that the members should do for themselves. The pastors are carrying it on their head. They want to solve all your problems. They cannot solve all your problems. How many problems of the church can you solve? Why don't you equip your members to solve the problems themselves? Hmm? Moses knew the ways of God, but, but the people knew the works. Some leaders are just letting people to know the work that God is doing through them. They are not letting the people to grow up to know the ways of God themselves. They are letting the people to come to them, to let them know the work that God is doing through them. Moses, the, the, the leaders are in the Moses generation. They think that to help you to grow is to promote you in church activities alone. To give you one new position, to give you another new position. To make you this position, to make you this leader, to make you that deacon, to make you that um, pastor. To make you this, that's, all, that's all they think of this ministry. That ministry is everything in the church. The only things in the church that is ministry. So I don't encourage you to go out. When in fact when you are going out, they think you want to divide the church. That is the Moses leader. They they put you, they enclose you, they enclose you. You never go into your promised land. You never go into your promised land. They don't know that it's in, it's in, it's in when every member is equipped to go into their promised land, the church will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. But they don't know. They just think that is that their small number that they have. They want to preserve that number. They want to preserve that number. God is not about preserving one position. God is about bearing fruits, bearing fruits, opening up gifts, opening up gifts. Let them grow and bear fruits in different directions, in every direction that the Lord has given to them. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The, 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 the Moses um, generation pastors, they elevate miracles more than principles of God. They elevate miracles. Everything about them, they want, they, think, they want it to be miracle, miracle, miracle. They want, they want to mesmerize people by miracles. How many miracles do they even do? 
Because this world does not function on miracles. Miracles are exceptions to the rule. Let the people know, the Moses leaders, they don't let the people know that the world does not function on miracles. That the world does not live on miracles. That people are making it in life. People are growing. People are developing just by just by putting the principles of God in place. Just by hard work. Just by diligence. Just by hard work. Just by diligence. Just by being focused. Just by, by studying. Just by, by concentrating your mind in, in a specific direction. You become a genius. They are not teaching people that all these things are in the Bible. That you don't get, you don't become the, the head of your of your job by miracle. That you don't become the head of you don't become the head of your job by miracle. You don't become the head of your of the company you are working by miracle. You don't become become the, the, the leader of, of your of, of, of an establishment by miracle. You don't become a millionaire by miracles. The church is not teaching people that everything is, is miracle, miracle in the sight of the, the Moses leaders. They don't teach you that it's hard work, it's self development that you need. It's to stay focused on the right things that you need, that you and you excel, you succeed. It's not miracle, miracle, miracle. We have over overemphasized miracles. We have overemphasized God working in our lives, God working in our lives to the extent that we don't even know that God wants to walk through us. God wants to walk through. God wants His power to walk through us. We just want God to give us, give us, give us. And he's waiting for us. He wants to use us, use us, use us. But we are still begging him, forgive me, give me, give me. How long will he continue to give us? He's tired. We are, he's only babies that, that, that keep asking, give me, give me, give me. Mommy, give me this. Mommy, give me that. Mommy, give me that. They don't care whether mommy is tired. They don't care whether mommy, mommy wants something that they should do for, for mommy. They just want mommy to give them, give them, give them. How many, how, how many years can you continue to ask God, give me, give me, give me, when God wants to, to, for you to grow so that he can use you, so that he can use you to reach this world. But we are still begging in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. We think that all our ministry is to be in the church and to, and to sing on Sundays and to, to clean the house and to do ushering. And the whole world is perishing around us. God is waiting for us. Say the, the harvest is much. Say, but the laborers are few. We are the laborers. We are all hoarded in the churches. The Moses generation leaders, they will keep you hoarded in the churches. They will keep having programs that put people, millions of people in one arena. Millions of people. That's why some churches, they build rubbish and the churches are collapsing on top of the people's head. Just because they keep gathering people, getting people looking for money, looking for money to build bigger structures. Meanwhile, the world is perishing. The world is perishing. The Moses leaders. They still think that God that God will punish those that 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 God punishes those that are ill. That when you're sick, it's punishment from God. It's not punishment from God. I've overshot my time terribly. So uh, I'm just talking about the leaders that don't know that the generation that we are in are the generation of the Joshua's, the Joshua's that will lead people to promised land, the Joshua's that will take you to to subdue your territory. Not the Joshua, not, not the Moses generation that keeps you in the house. That keeps giving you manna from heaven, manna from heaven. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be surviving on manna from heaven anymore. When they got to their promised land, when they are saved, they began to subdue the lands, take the territory for God. That's the generation we are in. Of Christians that we arise from the church to take over. To take over different territories for God. Let the church be released. 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 Let the members be released. Let the church be released. Let it become full of the gifts and the talent that the Lord has given to them. Let it begin to manifest. Let it begin to manifest. Let the pastors release the members. Let the pastors equip them and release the members. Release the members. You've ordered them to me too long. 10, 15, 20 years. They are still there with you of no effect. Let the pastors release the members. Teach them to be equipped and to go and take territories. This is a new generation. The Joshua generation is coming up. And any pastor that stands in this way, any pastor that stands in this way will be pushed aside. Any pastor that stands in the way of, 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 of the expansion of the kingdom of God will be pushed aside. Don't be one of those pastors that will be pushed aside for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Be a pastor that will propagate the expansion of the kingdom of God by equipping your members to take their territories for him, to take their territories for God. And in so doing, you are fighting the good fight of faith. God bless you all. I stayed too long today. I'll be coming next week to talk about the Joshua generation.
the Joshua Generation leaders. Thank you, Shegun. Thank you, Gift, for joining me. Flora, God bless you. Thank you, Daniel Asenga. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed your birthday. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Callistos. Thank you, Best Kenneth. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Doris. Tell her, Fain Tolanu. God bless you, Richly. Sister Modupe, thank you, Heidi Noble. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Edwin. Thank you, Osas. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you, Sister Inkiru. Ola Martin, how are you in America? I hope you're fine. Pastor Inkiru, how is Ukraine? Oriyomi, God bless you. How are you enjoying yourself? I, I saw you enjoying yourself on your holiday. Sister Violet, you are the best. And every person that will watch Budan Can Pop Dina, God bless you. And every other person that will listen to this. We're moving into the Moses generation. Into the Joshua generation, a generation that's that we equip people, we equip the saints for the work of ministry. A generation that we equip them to know that ministry is touching lives with the love of God, touching lives in the world with the love of God, expressing the principles of the kingdom of God all over the world. God bless you. Thanks. See you next week.